for watching. So since my last vlog, I've gotten so many requests to make this recipe for you guys. And today we are going to make cone chowder. So a lot of times when I make this, I make it totally different and it really just depends on what ingredients I have. So you don't have to stick to this recipe like 100% or anything. I change it quite a lot every time I make it, but I would say this is probably the best mixture that I've ever come up with. And we have a recipe in our Instant Pot recipe book for bomb.com corn chowder. But today I'm not gonna be making that exact recipe. It's kind of like a replica just because of what I have and what I have made in the past that Derek really, really likes. So that is what we're gonna be making today. So the first thing that we need for this recipe is two organic potatoes. And I just take these like big russet potatoes from the store because I, I don't know what it is, but I always just buy russets because I just like russets the best. But you know, if you like yellow potatoes or red potatoes or whatever the best, then you can always get those as well. But I'm just using russets because they're cheap and they're big and you don't need like a ton of them. If you were using like red or yellow potatoes, you'd probably need, I don't know, five to six of each. So two large russets or five to six small potatoes. I think the recipe in the Instant Pot book calls for about a pound of potatoes, but the potatoes are really just gonna act as like a thickener because when the recipe is done cooking, we're actually going to blend it up. So the potatoes will really help thicken the chowder. So next we have a red pepper. You don't have to use this. I've made it without red pepper before, um, but it just adds like a little bit more flavor. So we're just gonna chop this bad boy up and throw it in there. Like I said, everything is going to be blended at the end. So, you know, it doesn't have to be really precise cuts or anything like that. I would just kind of make it into chunks and then throw it in. If you don't like red pepper, you can definitely leave it out. You can replace it with yellow pepper, green pepper, whatever pepper you like, or you can just totally x it. So the next thing that we're gonna need is some onion. I've got half of a white onion here and that's just leftovers. So I'm just gonna chop this up and throw it in. You can also take like onion and garlic and chop it up and saute it in your Instant Pot before as well, but I'm way too lazy for that, so I don't do that stuff. So the next thing that I'm gonna add is a cup of red lentils. And I buy organic, so I don't really worry about rinsing them. And I've rinsed them in the past and I've not rinsed them and I've done all that kind of stuff and like nothing really makes a difference. People say that they're like super dirty, but I honestly don't think that they are. So next I'm going to add in just like a teaspoon of paprika. Again, this is another thing that you could leave out. And then I'm also going to add in probably like half a teaspoon of garlic. If you were sauteing your onions and garlic before, then like obviously leave this out, but I'm too lazy to saute garlic today. So next I'm going to add in a little bit of red curry paste and the first time that I made this with red curry paste, Derek was just like, wow, that is so amazing. Our original recipe doesn't actually call for it. I just had like leftover curry paste and I wanted to use it up, so I added it in and it was like ridiculous. Then I'm just gonna add in a little bit, probably like a teaspoon of better than bouillon. So this is just like a vegetable bouillon base and it just adds like a ton of flavor. I find when I like don't add this in that like things don't taste as good. But a lot of times I'll get really lazy and I'll just add in onion powder and garlic powder and hope it turns out the same, but it never does. Next, we're going to add in a can of coconut milk. And we just use like the full fat coconut milk because this makes literally enough servings for like eight meals. And it's really not that much fat when you break it down per meal because we're eating it with rice and it's not that bad for you. But you could also use um, 
a lower fat coconut milk like the ones that come in the tetra packs or the boxes are a lot lower fat than the ones that come in the cans and then the next thing that we have is two bags of frozen corns so these are a pound each and this one is just an organic golden cut corn and then i have this um, roasted corn from Trader Joe's which everything from Trader Joe's if you didn't know is GMO free so no GMO is here then the last thing that we're gonna add in is a quart of water or four cups of water so we're just gonna add that in and then we're gonna put this in the instant pot for 15 minutes on manual setting and let it naturally release so it will release for about 20 minutes if you don't have an instant pot you can put this on the stove and bring it to a boil, cover it, put it on like simmer or low and let it sit for about an hour and then take it off and it'll probably be the same but an instant pot is just so much faster so that's what I'm gonna be using today. Sorry, I just like totally passed out for like the past, I don't know, hour or so. Ever since I started cycling so much, I like pass out every single day and I'm just like so tired. <laughs> Anyways, now our corn chowder is done. So as you can see, it's like very thick and cooked. So all I do at this point is I take an immersion blender, which if you don't have an immersion blender, you could take spoonfuls of this and put it into your food processor or your Vitamix slowly so that you don't burn yourself and blend it. Um, but getting one of these is like 20 bucks. If you live in the US, you can get them off Amazon.com. They're super easy. Like you can make banana ice cream with them. You can make anything with them. Bringing them with you when you travel and stuff is super convenient. So I would highly, highly recommend buying one of these, but we're just going to blend this. So this is what mine looks like right now. You don't have to blend it until it's like ultra creamy or anything. I kind of like to leave some chunks in it sometimes just because it gives it more texture and more flavor, but let's try this out with some rice. Typically when I eat this, I just eat it over rice. So I just have a thing of brown rice here. You could eat it like as a soup or whatever, um, but it's way, way, way good over rice. Of course I forgot a spoon as well. And then I usually just like to mix it all together. I never add, um, like salt to when I'm cooking stuff just because you can't really taste it on the end result and like you might as well just wait and sprinkle a little bit on the top at the end because that's when you can really really taste it so I don't add sodium to my food unless it's like bouillon or something like that um, so I just added like a pinch of salt so good if you like creamy stuff, if you like cheesy stuff, if you like Mexican type foods or tortilla, tacos, burritos, anything like that, you're going to love this stuff. So definitely, definitely try this recipe. Let me know what you guys think and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.